Welcome back to Storage Day 2022. My name is Brian Terry, and I'm one of your hosts here, and I'm joined here with my whole fellow co-host and good friend. Hey, hey, hey guys, Anthony Fury, <laughs> uh, Storage Specialist Solutions Architect, and we're here today yeah. with, uh, with a special guest uh, to talk to us all about um, FSX Rontat. Yeah. So, uh, Nick, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Well, hi, guys. Thanks for having me today. It's exciting to be here. Um, my name is Nick Howell. I'm the Global Field CTO for our public cloud services at NetApp. And a lot of my time, over the, especially over the last year since it was launched last year, has been spent on uh, FSX for ONTAP. So it's, uh, it's been a lot of fun. I'm here to celebrate kind of the one-year anniversary of it. It's been a good time. Yeah, it's been, I know it's been really popular with, with customers, and we've had a lot of conversations oh, yeah. in the field about it. So yeah. um, hats off to you. Thank you. So, um, so, so, so do you have anything for us today? Like, do you want to want to kick off with, with anything? I just uh, I want to talk about the, what really comes into play with FSX for ONTAP, and it's about tapping into those enterprise workloads that are on-prem that haven't really figured out a way to get massive scale up to the cloud just yet. Um, you guys have had uh, Snowmobile and the Snow portfolio mm -hmm. to help with some of that stuff, but mm -hmm. really tapping into where enterprise customers, especially NetApp customers, how we can ease that transition to get up to the cloud. And we've heard about migration, we've heard about extending and all of that stuff in, from Ed and Andy in the last couple of sessions, but it's, it's really about easing that transition, and we've been doing that for decades uh, at NetApp. So having FSX and ONTAP, a managed instance of ONTAP in the cloud, really eases that migration path. Yeah. All they have to really do is, I mean, they're using their existing tooling uh, almost. They're, yeah. There's just less less for them to manage. Uh, they can get right to it. I always tell them to treat uh, uh, FSX, initially at least, as how you would treat a colo, a secondary colo facility. Mm -hmm. You would treat, you would mirror stuff or you would vault stuff to yep. uh, a secondary site with another storage array. Well, use FSX as that secondary storage array to get some to get your data sets up there. Initially. So if we took that a step further, like I know, I know a lot of times we talk to customers about migrating computer workloads. We say lift and shift. You know, you can think about lift and shift first, and then uh, look at modernizing, right? Yeah. Containerizing, serverless, and everything like that. So in your example about hey, looking looking at something like FSX as just like a colo, where do you see customers going from there? Like what's what's their next step? in that journey. The fun yeah. part about this is we've learned all these lessons before, Anthony. It's we, 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 we did this with virtualization as well, right? The yeah. first thing you do is you do a P to V, physical yep. to virtual transition, yep. and the <laughs> very first thing you do the next day is start building the fresh VM of with a clean OS and all that stuff, mm -hmm. and then let the app owners start to transition or refactor into that virtualized. If it, the same thing's going to happen here. We're seeing um, efforts around refactoring of workloads and applications to be either natively integrated with uh, things that would be in AWS, for example, native services, yeah. um, where we see that kind of stuff. So that refactoring stuff is happening already. Um, we see people using FSX as a target for backups and things like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I get excited when I see people really analyzing their entire workload stack and starting to maybe refactor a multi-tier app into containers yep. um, and yeah. use those as persistent or stateful applications, right? Yeah. Yeah, sounds pretty cool. Um, yeah. You know, just to back up on what you you said about containers, um, why would a customer do that? Like, why would they back up and go to container? What's the advantage of doing that and combining with your technology? Agility and less overhead of what's the word? Uh, uh, dependencies is the word I was yeah. looking for. <laughs> uh, so yes, I, the the ability to have sort of ephemeral containers, but with stateful volumes, uh, PVs attached to those is definitely something we've been at the heart of for a long time. We've got our Trident um, uh, connector, CSI mm -hmm. connector for Kubernetes. So all of that is built in with ONTAP logic right out, right out of the gate. Um, and from what I understand, it's one of the largest storage orchestrators in the wow. Kubernetes space right now. So wow. it is open source, github.com slash netapp if you want to check it out. So if you're doing refactoring of applications, just know that there is an ONTAP CSI out there mm -hmm. for Kubernetes based workloads. That's super interesting. Yeah. I love how you kind of can do this from containers. You know, it kind of helps with well on-prem. I think you're kind of just meeting customers where they're at, whether they have advanced technologies like that or just trying to move to the cloud. That's Absolutely, that's exciting. exactly what we want to do. And I've, I've even seen like cloud native customers uh, adopt FSX for ONTAP as well, which is, you know, they, they typically have just not been in a, 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 a NetApp shop. And they're like, hey, this this really meets our needs, and we're going to go, we're going we're gonna to go with it. And they've been very happy with the results. So it's yeah. really, like like you said, it's really amazing to see all the different workloads that we that are the art of the possible with workloads. We started here, and we've kind of gone, we've expanded that universe a lot. 
Absolutely, and you just nailed one of my absolute favorite experiences to have. It's a so I've I was a NetApp customer and contractor for a decade, and mm -hmm. before I ever joined the company ten years ago, so I eat, sleep, and breathe this stuff. The most exciting thing for me is seeing a customer's eyes light up the first time they get it yeah. when it comes to on tap and how how powerful it can be, especially cloud native customers or mm -hmm. people that have been working in AWS, mm -hmm. born in the cloud, kind of maybe some they've got a, a hot app or something and they're still struggling with that, they need that centralized unified uh, storage control, yep. right, or management plane. And they discover we, they discover accidentally backwards, yeah. stumble into FSX and find NetApp and ONTAP. And pff, we've had customers that have discovered FSX and ONTAP that way in AWS that end up becoming on-prem storage customers. Wow. wow. That's how powerful <laughs> this I is. Really hear that and yeah. it's it's one of the coolest experiences to go through or have the story get told to you. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. So I understand that the service integrates into a lot of different AWS tools. Can we talk a little bit about that? Yeah, it's it's fantastic. One of my personal favorites is CloudFormation. Ah, uh, the ability <laughs> to set up a deployment with everybody's favorite word, YAML. Um, and create a, a, a manifest of sorts with, with YAML and basically just be able to deploy that to any defined subnets, VPCs, and all of that stuff as in a standard deployment model. Man, that is, with, with the work that we've been doing with containers and Terraform and Ansible and all of that stuff, there's no reason we couldn't also do this with a deployment of ONTAP, and we've done it. Um, I've even got some that I, I still owe the, the community to put up in a GitHub repo somewhere. I've got some sample uh, CloudFormation templates to spin up your own instance of ONTAP yeah. uh, with a single couple of button clicks, right, using yeah. CloudFormation. Now, selfishly, you know, I want to talk about this a little bit because, you know, I, I work for the CloudFormation team, but nice. uh, can you talk a little bit about what that looks like with using CloudFormation? Are you talking about just deploying an infrastructure on AWS with CloudFormation in your service or orchestrating your platform? You know this better than anyone, the sky's the limit, right? You, it's, it's to the extent of your YAML skills. Um, yeah. It's to the extent of you really have to ask all the hard questions before you deploy it. Yeah. Um, it is a storage operating system. It's not an ephemeral workload. Um, that you're going to have to maintain it, uh, that deployment in a certain way. But if you have all of your networking defined, if you have your subnets and your VPCs and all of that stuff like predefined well, you have your IAM role, uh, roles laid out very well, you're going to understand how to build that YAML structure and be able to define all of that stuff. And you can, with CloudFormation, you can maintain a deployment in East 1 and a different deployment in West 2 and create snap mirror relationships all automated with a awesome. YAML file. And it's, I, I said earlier, I'll jokingly say this again, I used to, I made my career on stat, racking and stacking storage arrays <laughs> <laughs> servers, all of that stuff that Ed was talking about a little bit ago, right? Mm -hmm. And that was my bread and butter. I am an infrastructure dinosaur. I, that kind of stuff is still necessary today, but it won't be in a long, big, a short time in the future. So looking at things like Ansible, Terraform to automate that stuff along with cloud formation is, is a really big deal for me. Awesome. Yeah, hopefully you're not just doing that for your FS Extend stack, you're doing it for a lot more. <laughs> Lots of other stuff, but we're at AWS Storage Day, so yes, we're going to talk absolutely. about storage. So I've got a question for you. So if, so, so for the customers out there who, who are, have just heard about this FS Extend, um, and you know, especially like the cloud native customers, right? Yeah. Like they've, they have no experience with NetApp, they really like to, to, kick, to kick the tires. Any resources you can recommend for them to really kind of, hit, I'm going to use your term again, level up, like level up their skills, or just <laughs> like what's, what would you recommend for them to really um, just, just get into the weeds a bit and, and try out an FX, FSXN solution? Absolutely. Work so for, them. For, for FSXN, you can take that for a trial, and the beauty is it's a capacity-based uh, pay-as-you-go model. Yeah. So if you only go out there and provision a small piece to demo around and you want to build a small little lab to try it out, it's not going to cost you a lot, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it's not going to run away from you, so yep. to speak. Um, uh, just like AWS has introduced the badges, right? We were mm -hmm. talking about the new file and core badges that were yep. announced today. Uh, we also have some certification and learning programs okay. for ONTAP. So if you're wanting to get into FSX ONTAP, we have some core ONTAP fundamentals trainings awesome. that we can offer as well. So, and we have certifications like NCDA and NCIE that are that our administrators have been taking for decades now. Awesome. So. Uh, there are learning paths out there. My YouTube channel, I'm going on my own journey where I'm trying to show, uh, I take a physical array, literally unbox it, put it into a rack, and I'm going to stand up all kinds of VMs and show the entire journey of how to move all of that up from a physical array up to 
um, getting it into FSX and wow. trying to refactor those applications. That's awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you, Nick, for being here. I mean, this was just super awesome. Uh, yeah. awesome. You know, we could speak with you, I think, for another yeah. hour or so. But I wish we had more time. I wish we had more time. <laughs> but unfortunately, we got to move on. So yeah. thank you so me, much for joining us.